I, I greet you again this morning in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Just a song before we start. Maker of the heavens, you are the painter of the sky. Your greatest work reserved for such as I. The angels long to see at the gift you gave to me. The love of God so unrestrained and free. Of yours they melt my heart, they melt my heart oh, for you, oh Lord, are the essence of my praise. I treasure you for who you are, maker of the heavens, you are the painter of the sky. Come, for now I see your face. I love you since I've known you. I've grown to love you more. Each day my heart sails further from the shore. For you, oh Lord, are the fragrance of my praise. They melt my heart, they melt my heart for you, oh Lord, are the essence of my praise. I treasure you for who you are, for you, oh Lord, are the essence of my praise. I treasure you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Glory. <clears throat> yes, isn't it wonderful this morning to, to realize that um, the essence of our praise is Jesus Christ and the, the fragrance is everything in your life. You the word says in Galatians 2 verse 20 that I live no longer because I've been crucified with Christ. And it's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who died and gave himself for me. So this is wonderful um, and uh, precious, precious. And this is the wisdom of God. You know, you can seek wisdom. In any place in the depths of the earth, you can go and look for it in money, gold, silver. Uh, you can look for it in a lot of places, but unfortunately, it's not material value. It is, a, it is the unlimited riches, spiritual riches that lies in Christ and that is manifest when your body becomes broken, when you sacrifice, when you give yourself to God. Uh, I want to, we are busy with the ninth part of the series, uh, The Bible in the Light of Our Redemption. We did, uh, we are focusing on 1 Corinthians 1.30 that says of God, God places you in Christ. So there's no boasting in your own abilities. You surrender and God does uh, the rest uh, uh, through His Spirit. So when you boast, you boast in Jesus Christ. You boast in the completed work of Jesus Christ. Uh, the, the grace, redemption, justification that took place in 
this in the in God's Son Jesus Christ. So, one Corinthians one thirty says, "Of God are we in Christ Jesus, who has become for us the wisdom of God." Sophia, just shortly, Sophia means to come to the full insight into the true nature of things. So, to come to the full insight of your true nature as a child of God, that's wisdom, and to start to to unfold all the riches and all the blessings, every spiritual blessing in heavenly places, if we, in uh, heavenly places, Ephesians uh, 1 verse 3, has been bestowed unto us as children of God, for He has given us bountiful. Uh, the word says in Psalm, I think, 16, that the boundary lines has fallen for us at pleasant places. Broad is our inheritance. As a child of God, you realize that your riches and your wealth lies in him and nothing on this earth can actually be taken with you to heaven there is no nothing on this earth is going to be in heaven uh, because God has prepared for us a place a place where the streets are of gold and it's wonderful and that's a living hope so <clears throat> So uh, just quickly, uh, Sophia is the, uh, to come to the full insight into the true nature of things. Um, uh, and then, uh, we, uh, of God, you in Christ who has become for you wisdom from God, right, uh, righteousness. And we have uh, spoken about righteousness now. And righteousness is dikaiosune, uh, which comes from dikaios, and it means... Um, to stabilize you as just, establish, to establish you as just by the uh, uh, right, to stabilize you as right, uh, to come into a state of uprightness where your sins have been dealt with, uh, your sin nature have, have been, you've been transformed out of being, being a slave, a sin, sinner, a slave sinner of the devil and the uh, uh, and uh, doing his bidding and his work to become the very righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Upright, your sins washed, you've uh, been clothed in the robe of righteousness and having a complete new uh, armor, a complete new uh, 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 robe and being cleansed and being loved by God all of a sudden no longer in the... Uh, dimension of the devil but in a state where you are where God is satisfied with you because he has renewed you and that's where we talk about becoming born again the old things have passed away behold all things have become new so um, righteousness now we are going to focus today on the word sanctification and redemption of God are you in Christ who has become for you wisdom of God righteousness sanctification and redemption. So uh, 1 Corinthians 1.30 talks about sanctification. So what does sanctification really mean? Very interesting. Uh, sanctification. Um, if you look up the word sanctification in the Greek, it says uh, that it is um, uh, the word um, agiasmos. Agiasmos. And it comes from hagios. And I always said to my children when they were smaller, uh, still uh, uh, three and four and five years old, we were actually uh, at that stage um, later on living on a farm and we had two old horses there. And I always helped them to remember what that Greek word uh, means. And I said it means huggy horse. <laughs> huggy horse. <laughs> and it's almost the same pronunciation. Uh, um, um, Hagios. So, so the word means uh, consecration and purification. Consecration when you start and purification. But hagios, it means to become holy. Sanctification is to become holy. And holy means, if you look it down to the root meaning in the Greek lexicons and interlinears, you'll find that Huggy horse, uh, holy, holy means to be separated unto God. This is the most wonderful 
a thing as well that in Christ God separates you to belong to Him exclusively. Uh, it says here in 1 Peter 2 verse 9 it says that uh, but you are a chosen, a chosen. You know, all a color. Okay, we say so. Oh, I'm okay. That word, apparently, a lot of people say, you can look that up, in uh, Google it as well. Uh, most people feel that it was a chop that was given for uh, when you exported fruits and, and goods, uh, products. Then if it's okay and it's all fresh and good and, and it meets the standard, it's been chopped by... Uh, by uh, Ola Kala, and Ola Kala meant that it, 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 that was a standard of acceptance. It's everything is all right. It's all right. And, and uh, you know what, um, when, uh, uh, so, but it's only choice and chosen fruit that can be exported. So you must understand when God says that you are a chosen generation he picks you out to belong to him exclusively and this is also part of this very word hagios holy to be a holy separated unto god to belong to him exclusively and you know who god separates and who he chooses is the person that comes in meekness the person that gives themselves to god the, themselves to god and say yeah i surrender to you my lord and my king i surrender you take over I'm no longer going to do this my way. I'm going to do it your way. And, and then you give your, the reins of your, uh, of, your, of your life, the reins of your mind, the reins of your body. You start giving that. You give that over to God through His Spirit and then He will lead you. The children of God are led by the Spirit of God. And then you find that God will start changing your life to, uh, and transforming you to, to live out the image of Jesus Christ. The, the, uh, to start living out the, your true identity and your true nature as a child of God. So it says here in 1 Peter 2, but you are a chosen generation, a royal kingly priesthood. Priesthood, a kingly priesthood a holy nation you see holy sanctification means to separate you to belong to him exclusively so you're holy so you're clean when you separate something to belong to you exclusively it goes into a different camp my friends you're no longer in the camp of the devil's uh, uh, ser servants you're no longer his slave he plucks you out there this is the whole point of uh, uh, being conformed to the image of his likeness to be transformed to be placed within Jesus Christ to be a new creation uh, it, you're no longer part of the, uh, the of this uh, sinful race that has missed the mark the mark is to become born again in Christ that's the mark that's the place where you want to be that salvation Jesus' name like we said means Yahweh saves so your God in heaven saves you through his son so that's the place to hit the mark means to to shoot the arrow straight and to 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 receive to be found in him to receive him that's the mark that's the target and that's the mark so once you're in Him, there is a place of satisfaction, a place of mercy, a place of grace. It's free. His grace is free, but it is not cheap. He paid with His precious blood. The blood of Jesus Christ paid so that we can become holy. So you need that blood of Christ over you and that you get through repentance and baptism when you die in the baptismal pond when you die in Christ when you are when you are uh, identified to his death through baptism and then you are raised with him in the newness of life isn't that wonderful and that's what Romans 6 says you can go read it it's not my stories it is his, his story and I believe the word history 
comes from his story that means it's all revolving around Jesus Christ and I still believe that that's why we've got 2013 the year of 2013 it's 2013 2013 years pass after the death of Jesus Christ so history is is found it's its roots should also be in the story of Jesus Christ so it says here uh, his own special people to become his own special people that word special is a Greek word uh, that means it's a, a, a dot and a circle so it means God God surrounds you, you become the dot in that circle and you are found with Christ in God. So then you are special, you're a special person. And then all of a sudden you don't have this inferiority anymore like we said. Righteousness is the ability, it's the wisdom, it's the light that goes on and it's that wisdom all of a sudden that I don't have an inferiority complex. I'm not struggling to try and find out who I am. I know I'm a child of God. And I'm, there's mercy, there's kindness, there's goodness, there's uh, uh, all the good, the just, the noble things. Think of these things. The Bible says, in, I think in Philippians 4.8, uh, think of the good, the just, the holy, the righteous things, the good, the blameless, the, the perfect things of what Jesus Christ came to, to restore. And to, to, to furnish you with. And to, to establish redemption. To free you. If you find out that someone actually died for you on that cross of Calvary. And his name is Jesus. And you find out that he's the ve very uh, perfect sacrifice. God sent his only begotten son to come and do that for you. And you find out that it's done for me. Then you cannot but acknowledge it by giving your life a sacrifice to Him. And we're getting there this morning. But that, this is part of the sanctification process. And uh, He's given, uh, you have become His special people that you may proclaim the praises and you know, praise is value. So if you stop valuing God, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the name above every other name, then you start um, appropriating the full redemptive uh, work of Jesus Christ. You're starting to, to become part of that. So praise is not just to lift your hands or uh, just to... Um, to sing something and do it religiously because you uh, it's just a habit. Praise is appropriating the full, uh, full knowledge and the full work and the full redemptive uh, work of Jesus Christ. And to start loving it. To start loving it. Amen. So uh, it says here, to, so that we can proclaim, proclaim, proclamation. To proclaim the praises of Him who called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. To be enlightened out of the darkness into His light. God is light and in Him there is no darkness at all. So, so this is the first uh, wonderful scripture that I want to share with you. Uh, uh, it, uh, so hagios means it comes from hagi, uh, hagiasmos is sanctification it comes from the word holy hagios and and holy hagios means uh, uh, to be set apart for God how God actually takes you out of darkness and puts you in His wonderful light um, another scripture that I want to read uh, is uh, Colossians. The book of Colossians, uh, one of the epistles, uh, it says here, 113, let's read from 12. Giving thanks, I give thanks to my Father every day. I give thanks, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us. Qualified uh, is a, a word that means to equip 
one with adequate power to perform. <laughs> to, just listen to this. The word qualification means to equip you with the adequate power to perform what God wants you to do. So he's qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us, delivered us. He plucked us out. If you're a child of God, you must know that you've been delivered. Delivered us from the power of darkness and transformed us into the kingdom of the son of his love in whom we have redemption. You see the Bible in the light of redemption? Um, through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. The forgiveness of sins. Um, okay, so uh, I've also looked up that word uh, hagios. And hagios means pure, to become pure. It also means to become sinless. Now you say, oh, oh so you don't do sin anymore. The point is just your sin nature the rotten core in you has been dealt with. It's been plucked out and God gives you. You become a partaker of God's divine nature. And you might say to me, where do you read that, Dries? Um, let's go to Peter. Uh, isn't it? Uh, I think it's 2 Peter 1. It says that uh, grace and peace be multiplied to you. Grace is uh, God's riches. God's riches at Christ's expense. Grace is, um, uh, and peace, peace is to be joined again to Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as His divine power has given to us all things pertaining to Zoe life, God quality kind of life. Pertaining to life and godliness is God likeness. Godliness is to live like God. Um, through the knowledge of Him who called us by glory and virtue, by which having been given to us exceeding great and precious promises, through these you may be partakers of His divine nature. Partakers of His divine nature. Uh, that is... Uh, the partakers of divine nature having escaped the corruption uh, corruption is the decay corruption corruption that is in the world through lust having escaped the corruption uh, let's just see for corruption is uh, depravity depravity decay so we have escaped it. So, and, and what I'm saying to you is now you can become a partaker of God's divine nature. Can you believe? I mean, can you acknowledge, accept it? Can you embrace that? The wonderful ability to be partaker of God's divine nature. Listen, if this does not excite you, if this doesn't infuse you and kindles within you, the desire to, to hold God's hand and to say, please lead me on, then I don't think anything will. Because unless the gospel of Jesus Christ, this good news, uh, bring to you the desire and, and uh, the, the yearning to start changing, to become his child, then uh, there's nothing else that can save you. Because salvation only comes through the wonderful person, Jesus Christ. Well, only one name, the Bible says in Acts, you can go and read it. In Acts, the first part of Acts, I think of the second book, it says uh, uh, the, the, there has been given salvation only through the name Jesus Christ. Okay, so, so uh, let's look at the word um, hagios, but our time is running out here. So, uh, I just quickly want to take you to two more scriptures about sanctification. And uh, I want to read quickly um, Romans, Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. Romans 12, just listen to this. Um, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, I beseech you, uh, beseech, urge you, I urge you, I plead, I plead this case 
to you and I say, please, just look at this. Reckon, logizomai, it's the Greek word for reckon, it's Romans 6 verse 11. It says, logizomai, reckon, make an accurate calculation, reckon. Make an accurate, accurate calculation of which there is only one logical conclusion. Reckon yourself to be dead indeed to sin but alive in Christ. And that you can only do once you have repented and got baptized. Then you can, can settle that matter for once and for all. Then you become born again. You are a new creation. And then you must fix your eyes on Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of your faith. And walk as a, walk as a pilgrim and a sojourner. And you carry on with the full armor of God uh, around you, the breastplate of righteousness, the, the, uh, the belt of truth, the, the, um, the helmet of salvation, uh, uh, the, the shield of faith and the sword of the spirit to, 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 uh, to block out every onslaught, every evil arrow of the evil one and then you become a soldier of Jesus Christ and that's where this whole book of Bunyan came in uh, Pilgrim's Progress, how all these avenues you can you can uh, lose your way but you but the point is just to to focus forward to put your eyes on Jesus Christ and like Peter if he kept his eyes on Jesus Christ he would not have sunk into the sea he would have uh, into the water he would have carried on walking on top of that water so you can do mighty exploits for the uh, for his name's sake and you can do marvelous things uh, wonderful things you can the miracles can take place through your life you can raise the dead, heal, uh, heal the sick, uh, open the eyes of the blind. You can actually, the, when the, the power of Jesus, the dynamis, the power of Jesus Christ comes on you, you'll see you'll start living a different life. Um, I beseech you therefore, uh, brethren, Romans 12 verse 1, by the mercies, the mercies of God, the tender compassion. God is a God of compassion, my friends. Compassion means you care. You care for someone. He reaches out his hand to each and every one that comes to him with a true a, a calling a, to, that calls out to his name. He'll have compassion on you. So, so uh, by the mercies of God that you present, exhibit, you present, present means a parastemi and it means to place beside. Place yourself beside, near, uh, to offer, to put at one's disposal, to hold. So to put my body as, dispose, as disposal for God, to say, God, come and live here. So it says here that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. You know, when you start talking about sanctification and holiness, and if you look at the Old Testament... How the priest had to sacrifice a, 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 a dove, an innocent little dove, or a little lamb without spot and wrinkle. Uh, 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 how they had to slaughter them. Innocent things. And this was all a, a, a typology of Jesus Christ dying on that cross for you. Innocent. He was a righteous man. There was no fault in him. Even Pontius Pilate said, I find no fault with this man. He was innocent, perfect. And he had to go die for us on that cross. So that was a sacrifice. Now, you can also, once you become a child of God, you give your body a living sacrifice unto the Lord. It says a sacrifice, holy, holy. Here the word comes, hagios. It means to, sepi, to stand separated. No longer to go with the flow. I hear people say, oh, we're just going with the flow, you know. No longer going with the flow. You start standing up against this decay, depravity, apostasy, all the, the sinfulness of the world. And you say, no longer, no longer. I call out restore. From now on, I'm going to live a restored life. A, a beautiful life, a holy life, a blameless life, a righteous life. I'm going to strive to live for Jesus Christ daily. I'm going to put on the armor of God. I'm going to start living a good, wholesome, righteous, um, wise life for His name's sake. It says here, uh, but that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. 
that the word reasonable means rational um, worship. Okay, uh, what we're saying here is so that you present your bodies, that you may present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable, acceptable. Arrestos, you arrestos, you means well, arrestos, satisfactory, pleasing, accepting means you are well approved and well satisfied, pleasing. So, so, um, yeah, to present yourself uh, wholly acceptable to God, which is rational worship. Rational means you can understand it. It makes sense, rational. Be, if be, someone asks you, be rational, uh, rational, please, please just talk sense. It means talk sense. So this is the sensible thing for you to do in your life, to give your bodies a living sacrifice to Him so that you can prove. Uh, it says here, and do not become conformed to this world. This is how you do it. Do not become conformed. Means do not start to look like the rest of the world that goes with the flows and uh, wants to uh, basically just live, uh, eat, drink and be merry and just carry on into hell. It says here, no, do not co be conformed to this world, but be transformed. But be transformed. Allow Jesus Christ to transform you. By the renewing of your mind, by a renewed mind, that you may prove, that you may prove, that you may test, prove, what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Now you know God's will is your sanctification. God's will is to, for you to become born again. God's will for you is to be found in Christ. God's will for you is to be a new creation. God's will for you is to be restored, to be um, reconciled to Him, to have a koinonia fellowship, to, to, uh, to be, have the ability to, to, to receive His grace and His righteousness that will make you reign through the one Jesus Christ. God's will for you is to, to deal with, your in, with, the, with the fact that you, have, uh, you are captured. And by dealing with that, you call out to Jesus Christ and He takes over and, and then you become, re repent, you repent, get baptized and you get saved. That's God's will for you. God's will is the, uh, the, uh, the Bible in the light of your redemption. God's will for you is uh, the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. That's God's will. We can look at God's will in another session. But uh, just that. And then... We're talking about sanctification. Let's just quickly turn to 2 Corinthians 6. Just before I end off here. 2 Corinthians 6. It says here, Do not be unequally yoked together. Unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Don't be yoked with them. Don't walk their path. Get out of there. It's not going to bring you anything. It's just going to de destroy your life. Uh, for what fellowship has righteousness with the lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? You see, God brought you into the marvelous light. If you're a child of God, if you're born again, you've got no more place with, these, uh, with sinners. Uh, I'm not saying you don't love them. I'm saying that you live a virtuous life. You do not... You do not uh, um, sit in the seat of the scornful and the sinner. Go read Psalm 1. You come out of that. There. You, become, you become consecrated. You, be, you become, uh, um, um, like we said, sanctified. Uh, 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 separated unto God. So you realize that I'm in this world, but I'm not from this world anymore. I'm cleansed. And then you start holding out your hand and you start ministering to these people that is still in darkness but you pull them out into the light and you don't say yeah i'm gonna carry on with uh, with uh, idol worship and with all and and with sinful deeds just because i want to be part of them no you you if you um if you minister to the unsaved you minister out of the dimension and the place of holiness and righteousness. Um, 
when you see in the Bible how Jesus uh, um, spent time with sinners and tax collectors, it didn't mean he was busy uh, with, uh, with uh, sinful deeds in their presence. He was, whenever he came on the scene, he either healed someone, he went to a marriage, he, 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 a miracle took place, and he started demonstrating the new creation. And, and he says, when Jesus started his ministry, he started ministering, uh, 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 speaking about the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God which is righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Spirit. And he started breaking those bonds, bondages, and, uh, and he started opening the eyes of the blind, and he started raising the dead, and, and miracles took place.